In the fast-paced world of business, impressing your managers and your coworkers requires a balance of efficiency and work-life balance. You want to be good at your job, but you don't want to burn out. Viva Insights is your secret weapon to mastering that balance. So let's jump in and take a look at some of the features to get you started. I have opened Microsoft Teams so that I can show you how to find Viva Insights. Now, if you have an enterprise license or a government license, it's probably included in that package. If you wanna see if this is included in your license type, I put a link to the Microsoft page below. To find Insights, I went to the three dots on the left-hand side of the screen and clicked More Added Apps. And then Viva Insights is right here on the list, but if it doesn't happen to be on your list, use the search bar to look for it. If you still don't find it, then your organization either hasn't enabled it or they don't have a license type that includes it. Now that we have Insights open, we are on the home page. Now what you see in the recommended for you section is going to change based on the content that you interact with the most. So one of my favorites is praise. So praise is right here at the top of the screen. You will also see things such as disconnect with quiet time, set virtual commutes and meditations that are five minutes or less. Let's look at our first example and talk about sending praise. What this allows you to do is create a message as a Teams chat or channel post to recognize someone for helping you. Notice in the title section, there are several choices. If your admin allows it, custom choices can be added. Now I'm in a test environment, so I just have the standard ones. And maybe I wanna send a thank you to my coworker. So I'll select that. Next, you can add an optional note. In this example, I'm going to thank Nestor for helping with the project that we were recently working on. Next, you can choose a background color. I'm just gonna choose this third one. And you also have to say who the praise is going to. You can select anybody from within your company. Then we have two choices. Do you want this to be a chat, which is gonna be private between me and Nestor, or do I want this to post in a Teams channel so that I can send the praise for everyone to see? I typically send mine in a chat, but there's no wrong answer here. Choose whatever makes sense for you. I really love this feature because it makes people feel recognized and valued for the work that they do. Let's click send and finish the process. After you start using Insights, the recommended section will start recommending people to praise based on who you collaborate with in email, Teams chats, and Teams meetings. Another thing you can do is build the habit of recognizing people by setting up a reminder to send praise. I set mine for 4.30 on Fridays so that I can reflect on the week and find someone to praise. Trust me, if you look, there's always someone. When your scheduled date and time comes, you will see a notification under the activity bill asking you, hey, do you want to send praise today? Now we are going to talk about features that you can find on other tabs. Let's start with well-being. The first thing on the list is start a daily focus plan. Research shows that it can take up to 20 minutes to get back on task after being interrupted. A focus plan will block time on your calendar on a daily basis so that you can concentrate on your projects. After you click on daily focus plan, you can click on change settings to adjust the default. Viva has set aside two hours each day for your plan. If you click the drop down, you can choose one or four hours instead. Next, you can choose if you prefer your focus time to be morning or afternoon. I'm an afternoon person, so let's change that too. You can also tell Viva, don't schedule time earlier than a specified time. I am really an afternoon person, so let's say 3 p.m. For someone like me who gets distracted by every bing coming from Outlook and Teams, I like to allow mute notifications during my focus time. Once you set this up to your preferences, click Save Changes. Notice that you get a message saying it can take up to 24 hours for the changes to be reflected on your calendar. Here is an example of what the schedule might look like once it populates. Now let's look at disconnect with quiet time. This is where you create a work-life balance to keep from burning out. During this time, Outlook and Teams notifications are muted on your mobile device. Click on set quiet time. Here you can mute mobile notifications for certain hours. 
Here I'm going to choose 5.15 p.m. until midnight. After that, I've turned my phone off anyway. In the Mute All Day section, you can choose days, such as weekends, where you will not receive any notifications. Choose what makes sense for your business practices and then click Save Changes. If we scroll down, another useful thing is lunch hours. If you're anything like me, you forget to take your break. The next thing you know, it's 2 o'clock and you're still working. Use lunch break settings to choose a time that works for you and hopefully people won't try to double book your protected time. As you can see in the left-hand navigation menu, there are a lot of things you can configure. Let's quickly take a look at the popular virtual commute. This lets you set a reminder to start wrapping up your work at the end of the day. It is designed to help create work-life balance for those who work at home and have a tendency to keep working even after hours. Set up the schedule and you will get a notification in the activity bell letting you know it's time to wrap up. Even if you go to the office, this is still useful to set aside time to finish your tasks and take note of the things you need to do tomorrow. Let's go back to the main well-being page. At the bottom, you will see reflect on your emotions. Now I can hear some of you saying what my boss does. Who cares about the touchy-feely stuff? What I like about this is it lets you click on the face icons to quickly identify how you are feeling that day. Once you start using it, you will start to see trends on the 7 and 30 day charts. If you notice you're feeling bad or very bad, that could be stress in your work environment. Think on what you were doing on those days and maybe you can see a pattern of work that could be changed to even out your workload. Conversely, on the days you feel very good or good, what was it about that day that made you feel that way and can you create more opportunities like that in your schedule? Let's navigate up to the meditation section. Now, speaking of stress, sometimes it's just something that's happening in the moment and you can use these five minute or less meditations to take a break and reset. Now, one of my favorites is take a breather. Just gives me one minute where I can do some deep breathing and then get back to my tasks. The next thing we're going to look at is the productivity tab. Here you can see information about meeting habits. Since this is a test environment, the data is not the best. So here's a screenshot of a better example. Let's look at a couple of key insights. The first thing I notice is only 67% of my meetings have advanced notice. This tells me that I'm allowing people to pull me into meetings at the last minute. I work in a support role, so yeah, I have meetings with my customers with no notice. This may not make sense for your work. Tell me in the comments below if you have a lot of last minute meetings and if this is something you feel should be reduced based on your business process. It also looks like I'm decent at not double booking my time and I don't multitask during meetings very often. If we go to the meeting details tabs, we can see a breakdown of meetings by titles. The green check mark indicates that a particular meeting followed the best business practices set out by Insights. The red X means that you should pay attention to this category. For example, it looks like these fake meetings do not have a high attendance. If this were real data, this could indicate that I am scheduling meetings at times that are not the best for the people I invited. Maybe I need to look at other times so I can have more efficient meetings. If we go back to meeting habits and scroll down, you will see a section for suggested tasks. As you use insights more, you will get better suggestions. Right now, the only suggestions I'm getting are from Nestor Wilkie, who is my boss in this scenario. I have pinned Nestor as a top collaborator so that the task he assigns me in emails, chats, or meetings will always be at the top of the list. Let's go to the last tab and that is teamwork. This is where you can see who you collaborate with the most and get some information regarding your communication habits, such as the number of collaborators and if you are collaborating within work or outside of work hours. You can also see details about your communication habits, such as the breakdown of what tools you are using in terms of Teams meetings, chats, or emails. Click on Show Details to get more granular information. If we scroll to the top, you will see who you worked with the most in the past four weeks. In a real environment, you would see several names here. The first line is who you interact with the most. The second line is who you interact with regularly. And the last one is 
those you collaborate with upon occasion. At the top of the Network tab, you will see some tips for better collaboration and tips for fresh ideas. I am going to navigate back to the home screen. As you have seen in this video, there are many options to help you impress your boss with how efficient you are. There are additional features you can explore. Today, I just talked about some of the ones that people use the most. For more Teams-related information, check out the video on the screen. See you next time.